The Power of Testimony. Welcome to UNHD. How you doing? This is Pastor Eric. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, something very, uh, very, very hard for me to discuss uh, because I don't. I still don't wrap my head around it. But what a a savior we have! You know what a horrible, horrible savior we got. Horrible. Here's a man that has done so much. That, that, that has caused so much problems in the world. And I'm going to read to you out of the Bible why people think he's so horrible. We're going to discuss, discuss the things that, that is so terrible about our Savior. So this is, comes out of Romans 5. We're going to go through 6 through 8. For while we still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now, that is, that's the end of the thing that we have. That's the end of the case of this, this episode about why Christ is so horrible. He's, the people look at him so horribly. They think such a negative thing about our Savior. Such a horrible person he is that he died for our sins. Such a terrible, you know, Savior he is, and and and, and God that he is that that he died so we don't have to die. Here's a man that's so awful that he died for our sins. Here's a man that's so terrible that he, he gave us the one command, which is to love one another. Here's a man that is so. So, so uncool that he asked us to be good to each other. He asked us to respect our parents and he asked us to, to, to love our leaders and pray for our enemies and to love our enemies and, and to be gentle and to be, and, and, and to, and to be meek and to be righteous and, and, and to hold yourself in better esteem and be a more kind person. These are such horrible things that Christ asked us to do. And people hate him because he's asking all these things and also because he's completed these things. Our Lord and Savior not only asks us to do the things that He's done, He abides in us, and if we abide in Him, we're able to do those very same things. But Jesus Christ is so terrible in so many people's minds. He's such an awful person because He, he requires so much goodness from us. That's the real truth right there. He requires so much goodness from us. He requires us to be better than ourselves. Because, you know, the real truth is, we love to pat ourselves on the back and have others pat ourselves on the back so that way they can say, look how good you are, man. You've done phenomenal things. We don't like giving credit to God. We'd rather, much rather have that credit for ourselves. And then you see that part passage where it says, for while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. The ungodly, me and you and the rest of the people out in the world, we were all atheists at one point. All didn't understand the cross. All did had enmity with, with God and ourselves. We once had a rift so wide that there was nothing we could get to God until Christ got on that cross and died for the people that loved him and for the people that did not love him just to give them a chance to come to him. And here he is, and I start again, Christ is such a terrible person, such a terrible, terrible name because he asked us to do what's right. And that's the opinion that people have of him. These, these so-called atheists and agnostics and, and the people, the Buddhists, and people that, that don't believe, they believe in this really far-out idea that all paths lead to God. And, you know, God is real true love, and there's really no true evil in the world. You know, people come up with the most imaginative fairy tales you can't even put inside of a Hollywood movie about God. The truth of God is lying right in here right inside your heart, right inside your soul. Every day you wake up and take a breath, that's because God's grace. Every time you walk out your door and make a choice, say, I don't love God today, he still loves you and he still gives you the right to, to get up with a free mind to maybe one day you'll change your mind. Maybe one day you're gonna change your heart and say, Lord, I accept that I was made by you and I wanna be better. I wanna be, I don't wanna be a sinner anymore. I don't want my life to be such a horrible, hard place to be. Horrible is the word of this episode, by the way. I don't want my life to be this way anymore. When you can finally say that, you can be saved. 
And Christ it is not what everybody paint him to do. Here's a man that was put on the cross, not because he committed any sin to the world, to the world that is, you know, by, 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 by their accounts, you know, the Pharisees and the Sudacees, you know, the people that hung him up, the Romans that hung him up. The only crime he committed was a crime that they made up because they didn't want to believe in him. They said he was not king of the Jews. Yes, he was. They call, he called himself the Messiah. Yes, he was. Jesus never lied about one thing. And they, and they put him on the cross for it. But truthfully, Jesus went to that cross for us. He wasn't put there by force. He went by choice. How powerful is that our Savior went to the cross as a choice to save the ungodly, to save someone like me, to save someone like you, to, to, for, to where you can actually sit there and make a decision. Either I'm going to go with Christ or I'm going to go with the world. We have a choice to be one of those two thieves. Every day we have a choice to be one of those two thieves. Are we going to be this thief that says, Lord, if you could just remember me to take me to heaven. Or this thief that says, hey, you, you ain't no better than me. You may as well hang on that cross just like I am. We get to choose that every single day. But this, 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 this episode is addressing a very serious, serious problem. People want to look at Christ as the problem. They want to look at, oh, it's religion. It's such, it's, it's man made up. You can't make up a story that's beautiful. Man is not that skilled. We, not even Hollywood can come up with a story so phenomenal, so profound, so accurate, so truthful, that, that fulfills all prophecy, that explains the way from the beginning of time to the end of time. That gives us peace, gives us joy, gives us an idea of laws, gives us an idea of how governments work, gives an idea about how healthcare works, gives us an idea. Every single thing that is in that Bible has reshaped humanity as a whole. To a generations before us and after us is laid at the foundation of Jesus Christ. Created through him is all things made. And people wake up and hate him for that. People wake up and discredit him for that. Mock us, throw trash at us, throw barbs at us. I go through Google Plus many, many nights and, 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 and read just the, the multitude of attacks against Christians, the multitude of people trying to, to logically explain away God. And when that doesn't work, they go to stone throwing. Let me first try to discredit Christ in, with this Christian. Once they realize that didn't work, let me start throwing rocks at them and start spitting on them and start treating them like crap because you know what? I know that I can't change their mind from the truth, so I just go get mad at them. Well, you know what they always say, right? The truth hurts. Christ is not who you think he is. You know, he's not this, 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 this unforgiving, unloving God. He is a God of beauty, God of love, God of joy, God of peace, and he reconciled us back to God. He reconciled us back to the Father, our Creator. And we repay him with how? With excuses? We come up with our logical minds. We don't want to have no patience. We're waiting on God's blessings. We, we, we don't, we, we just, we're, we're like brats most of the time. And that's just for the believers. To the non-believer, we're, he's a mockery to be made fun of. Make funny posters and, 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 and comedians go on online and just make all kinds of tirades and just funny jokes. And it's not funny. It's not funny that a man died for you. It's not funny that a man put himself on a cross and, and was beaten the night before. That early morning, I'm sorry. Beaten and spit on and humiliated just so you don't have to pay for any more sins. That's a joke to some people. That's funny to them. But it's not funny. This it's, it's is a real life thing. Jesus Christ is alive. He is a living Savior. Jesus Christ saved my life. I can, I'm a witness to him. It says in our Bible many times, we are the living witnesses of Christ. Every time my mouth opens, I pray that people can hear Jesus coming out of my voice. Because not by my works, I'm good. Only because of him. Only because of Christ am I standing here right now, being able to preach this gospel that he trusted me with. Not because I'm good. Not because I earned it from him. Because he chose to say, Eric, I think, I think you can preach this gospel. I'm ready for you to do this. You're my, I want you to preach the gospel and speak and, and share the salvation to others. And I carry that burden every day. And I say the burden, not the burden is a bad one, but I carry that because I hope and pray that I do the right thing every single day. I hope and pray that I'll be the best man that I can. Because that's all I can hope for. I can't, I'm not righteous by my own works. I'm only justified by, by the blood of Christ. But I can try to practice righteousness. I can try to be a better man every day. And that's what Christ asks us to do. Be better. 
Abide in me and I abide in you. It becomes easier to try to do to be better. It becomes easier to be more gentle. It becomes easier to be more meek. It becomes easier to be more giving. It becomes easier to love our brothers. It becomes easier to love our enemies. It becomes e easier when someone is throwing barbs at us that we can open up our arms and love them. It becomes easier when we stay in Christ and not look at him as the bad guy. Now look at him, the man that's going to change my life for the worst. The greatest caretaker known to man is our God. He was here before us and he'll be after us. Surrender yourself to him. Surrender yourself to Christ so that way he can clean you up and you're no longer on this outside no more. Come on the inside. Come on, come have a real true home. We're pilgrims. Us, us believers, we're pilgrims in this world. But we don't we don't have to go by ourselves. We can bring you with us. If you don't, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, let today be the day you accepted Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. This is Pastor Eric, UNHD Online. I love you very much.